circles. You know how like if you have only one wheel on, you just go in circles. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I got to get the other training wheel on because you, my friend, are like, like the yep. Tasmanian devil in circles. But I'm going really, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but <laughs> let me show you how far you went. Exactly. Exactly. You just kind of, you just kind of did this That's funny. a lot of times. And picture. so um, when I'm thinking about like go being goal driven and mm -hmm. having like peace and how, how are you like driven yet present in the moment? Natalie Taylor, thank you so much for, first of all, coming back on the podcast, but also it is super cool to uh, have you in my home to meet you in person. Live. We're live. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> We're live. We're face to face. We're not live. <laughs> <laughs> this is not AI generated. We are face to face. Not a deep fake. Yep. Got a chance to, but you'll never know now, you know, in about Scary. a year from now, we're not going to be able to tell the difference, I'll which is crazy. A holographic something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Just superimposing mm -hmm. you onto everything. Oh, yeah. well, I saw that you got that pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome endorsement. I got an from, endorsement? Uh, from uh, former president <laughs> Donald Trump. <for> your, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, you're a, you're a health coach to Donald Trump. Okay. We have to think. Jonathan Gibson for that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are friends with Jonathan, you know that he's all things tech savvy. Mm -hmm. And he, he, it, it is amazing. It's the it's... things that he can do is amazing. And so um, he was down in his back. And so he was not able to be up and active. Okay. But his mind, so sharp and brilliant, <laughs> very active. So he just randomly starts sending me these Things uh -huh. I don't even know what what are they called? The, uh, the deep fakes. Deep fakes. That's yeah, what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about know. when you have someone else's face and you put a voice yes. to it. They're saying something different. It de it depends. Okay. So it depends how it's being done. Okay. But it's a a deep fake is when, like, if I literally sit sit here, record mm -hmm. myself, uh -huh. and then I superimpose that person's face over mine. Okay. which is really cool technology that's fairly recent okay. that's amazing okay what he did is more so i think it's a it's probably an ai tool mm -hmm. that generates his voice yeah um to basically say whatever he wants donald trump, donald to, trump say, to say <laughs> or whoever to say it's and wild. then uses a previous recording to make it look like he's, you know, mimicking. Because you can tell yes. that he's not actually, say, yeah. it looks like he's saying something Which different. Which I think that makes it even better. Like, I love yeah. that it really, like, you can tell you can that tell it's that like, it's, Ooh, I, I mean, done. He sent several. I only posted one. He sent several. It was so <laughs> funny. Oh, my gosh. So, I am Donald Trump's health coach. It's amazing. Congratulations. Is, thank I mean, you. That's... Thank you. I did have him throw out his ice cream. Yeah, As, he said that. He said that. Yeah. He said that it really upset him. But you know what? Blood sugars matter. It does. What <laughs> what's his uh what's his go-to ice cream flavor? Oh, um, oof. I'm gonna go with uh <laughs> shoot, I wish I was quick on my feet. Okay. On. <laughs> no, I wish I could think of something funny. The, okay, what flavor would describe Don Donald Trump? That's the question of the hour. That's what I was trying to be quick on my feet with, but I'm not. Okay, so. Uh, Rocky Road. Rocky Road. You think he rocks out that hard to Rocky Road? Or oh. it's just like a Rocky Road, Rocky wherever Road. he is. Um, yeah. Strong, strong flavor. It's got to be like a strong flavor. Like a pistachio or something like that, Could maybe. Could be, yeah. But vanilla. Like it's, you know. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like with the like white hairish and the like he's very yeah. white, yeah, but he's strong personality. Yeah. The important thing is that we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing but is that, that is what that's why I came here today was to discuss with you we, Donald Trump's if Donald Trump was an ice cream. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish what we could phone do? a friend because. Jonathan Gibson could tell us immediately. He could. Yeah, yeah. You think yes. orange? Like sherbet. You think sherbet. That's kind of cheating, though, because a sherbet <laughs> is not ice cream. Oh, it's true. Okay. What is that stuff? Orange creamsicle? Yes. You think he would just go for, like, the, the um, straight-up, like, creamsicle, like, popsicle yes. type thing? Okay. That's a power move. Yeah. 
breaks That's the powerful. mold of ice cream altogether, yet mm -hmm. it's still something. I've similar. tried all the flavors. <laughs> uh, I'm not good. <clears throat> I don't have a good trunk, but. <laughs> Oh, so I threw out all of his uh, sorbet. Nope. What are they called? Dream sickles. Dream. I, I call them cream sickles. <laughs> <laughs> I threw them out. Dream sickles. That's I threw like, them out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I love that he Googled me. Mm -hmm. I think he said he Googled me. <laughs> yeah, he had nobody. He didn't know enough he people didn't to know make a anyone. recommendation. He had to no. turn to the good old Googs. He, he Googled me. Yeah. So funny enough, if you Google me. Mm -hmm. A singer comes up. There's actually a popular singer that's country singer has my name. Country singer sounds like a country. No, oh, I think she's a Christian artist. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm like, well, I mean, if someone's gonna have my name, yeah, might as well be a. She Christian. It's really probably I have her name in her <laughs> world, but in my world, she has my name. That's true. Mm -hmm. She's living in your dream. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Is but she is she popular? Is she famous? Like, hmm. um, famous enough that I tried to purchase the um, domain and it's uh -huh. a lot of money. Oh, uh, okay. So, famous enough that she. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Natalie Taylor, the singer. Can I just have the domain? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Is it too much? Donald Trump would vouch for me. He will. Oh. Maybe I should have Donald ask her he can... to surrender the rights. Yeah. Okay. He can. He can make it happen. <laughs> he can make it happen. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. He's got he's got some connections. I've I heard, think so. I've heard he's got some resources. Yeah, I think. Um, mm -hmm. what did you go with when you couldn't do Natalie Taylor? Uh ooh. What is your what what is your website? Uh oh shoot. I should have looked that up. <laughs> That's one of the main questions you get. Hold ask on, on one second. <laughs> <laughs> um is, what is your website? <laughs> Vote a friend. Jonathan Gibson. <laughs> he, he would know. Okay, okay I'm going to look it up. No, seriously. It's, I think it's hello at. <laughs> hello? Nope. Uh, nope. Natalie. I'm Natalie Taylor. Taylor. Oh, no. No. Some people do that. Uh, Natalie dot know. Taylor. Nope. Natalie Taylor dot net. Nope. I don't know how to find it either. <laughs> Literally, my we were driving over here, and my husband goes, "Okay, if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that?" And mm -hmm. I was like, "Hold on, let me write that down." <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't look up the website. I just know how you can get in touch with me. Okay. So maybe ask me you want to look. You want to look that up. You want to look up Natalie Taylor. <laughs> Natalie Taylor's website. <laughs> so we could let. You know. Okay, wait. Let me. Okay, I have it in my notes. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not doing this exclusively for me because I know I could find it later. Yeah, my Listen, my wife is off to the side doing cameras and being awesome. She needs her own microphone, and then she this has one. Would I be... gave her a microphone, and I said, oh. "Hey, feel free to jump in." And she was like, "No, I'm not going to jump in." It would have been Meanwhile, amazing. we've been Meanwhile. on for seven minutes, and four of it she's, has been Denise. She's jumping in. Yes. So, uh, all right. Okay, I'm still looking. Hold on, Natalie Taylor. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. <laughs> see, it, Not her, you. though. We want. Okay. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> All we know for sure yep. is that it's not yes. NatalieTaylor.com. Yep. Website. Beyond that. Oh. The people that love me and support me and that are. Try. Oh, I bet it's on my um, Facebook. It's on my Facebook. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I can do that. When Google fails. Yes. <laughs> yeah. People I'm just that, trying like, to help people find you. I know. You know what I mean? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, this could be my problem. Okay, let's see. Oh, meetnatalietaylor.com. Boom. Meetnatalietaylor.com. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Dot com. <laughs> now. <laughs> After seven minutes of searching. You were waiting we have, under your seat for that. We Go found it. Go right now. Meet Natalie Taylor dot com. Check out the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit up the social. The socials. The socials. Yeah, there you yeah. go. The socials. I do, do have follows. this one. I do have this one on lock. 
I looked it up before I came. It's <laughs> Natalie Taylor on Facebook. And it's nice. Natalie R, like R is in Ray. That's my mm -hmm. middle name. Taylor on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Like Natalie R. Taylor, all sandwiched. Natalie R. Taylor. On Instagram. Love it. Yeah, I did Love look it. that up. Love it. <laughs> I have so. a few more things. I have a, <laughs> I have a few more things I looked up before I came. Uh -huh. I'm ready. <laughs> so now, so now that we've uh, talked about Donald Trump's favorite ice cream, okay, we figured out where people can find you. Um, mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit about who you are, and what you do. Oh, I love that question. <laughs> okay. Um, who am I? First of all, I am a wife. I've been married for 20, almost 25 years. Wow. Yeah. I know. Shout out to John, who I just met a few minutes ago. Um, I was married when I was five. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I was like, I was going to say when you told me before the age of your kids, I was like, did you have them when you were 12? Like, I was or eight? pregnant when I was 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it really turned your life around. It did. It really, it, uh huh. Yeah. So married for 25 years, I have a daughter that is 23 mm -hmm. and a son that is tw that is 22. And so currently, I think, uh, let's see, about six or seven months ago, I stepped away from my traditional church position. Okay. And so my life, so now if you say, what does life look like? Like, oof, it looks like. You have taken my like life and you did like this and, you're, and so yeah, it's all upside down. So right now, I am I'm doing a, a podcast, uh, the table with Natalie. No, is that it? The table, the table. It, it is called the table. It's called the table. <laughs> I can confirm. Yep. The podcast is the called table the table with Natalie, Natalie Taylor. Taylor. It's good. You should look it up. It is good. Um, it is good. Uh, so I'm doing a podcast and really this season of my life with my children are super important. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually having a conversation with my very dear friend recently. We were talking about just where we were in life. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I could go back and change, you know, as a parent, you will kind of have that feeling of like, man, if I could change this, if I could go mm -hmm. back and change something, this is what I would change. And I've always said if I could go back and change my ability to be present with my kids when they were growing up well, more than physical, I was physically present, but my mind was always yeah. racing with the next thing. And I was on to the next thing and I was chasing my dreams and making myself busy when I didn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And so really for my kids life mentally, I mean, I was always trying to be somewhere else. Yeah. And so this little short stint of the next seven months between now and the end of July um, really is God's just redemptive work and allowing me to be mm. very present. So they're both in the middle of a major life change. My daughter is going to school to be an LPN. My son is going into the military. And so like this little season of our life yeah. is like one moment in our history that we won't get back. And so mm. I have all of the time and now just peace in my heart to say, you know what? God's got me in all the things and I can just be present with my kids. So um, that's what this little short stint looks like. But um, my husband travels a lot. So I travel with him some. Um, I have the ability to speak at places. I recently did a three week um, stint in South Africa and did leadership conferences. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun leadership conferences. I spoke at a few like churches on Sunday. I did a women's conference. Um, I'm actually speaking at a women's conference um, in March, March 1st and 2nd um, at Living Water Church, I think. Well, I'll have to look that up. But anyway, it's in Conroe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's oh, yeah, just a Conroe. little bit. Yeah, it's just a little bit of um, I think I'm able to pursue passion projects, yeah. now, which has been a first for Good me. For you. Yeah. So it's fun. So I'm doing a little bit of everything. But really what I'm majoring on are mm -hmm. my kiddos. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I really like what you said there. I resonate a lot with what you were saying about the being present. Yeah. Being present like in the moments that you're in. Mm -hmm. And not that you not that you're like absentee, but that mm -hmm. mentally, you know, because I know I fall into this a lot, is that being just so distracted 
Mm -hmm. because I might be thinking about the thing that I didn't get done yet that I need to be working on, or I might be thinking about the finances, or I might be yeah. thinking about whatever. And so I, I think that a lot of people fall into this thing of like, when I'm at work, I'm not thinking about work because I'm mm -hmm. thinking about other stuff. And so I don't do a whole, I don't do my work well. And then when I'm at home, I'm thinking about work stuff because I didn't do what I was supposed to do when I was there. And like, you yes. know, we kind of live our lives kind of distracted, I think a lot of times. And I, I think that, I think learning how to be present mm -hmm. in the moment that we're in is so important. And I think that it's almost kind of a skill yeah. to develop because, not, and not everybody's like this, so yeah. I'm not putting everybody in the same category, mm -hmm. but I think that for a lot of us, we default to, overthinking in, oh, in the yeah. moment that we're in and thinking about the wrong thing at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. It's not that we shouldn't ever think about it, but we don't need to think about this when we're over in this moment right here. Yeah. And yeah, so I yeah. really resonated with what you were saying there. Yeah, I think yeah. for me, I'm discovering um, that what had, what kept me, <clears throat> what kept my mind racing in those seasons and really um, my mind raced really up until probably about the last like month. Like mm. God has just done such a beautiful work in my life over the past few months. And we can maybe talk about that, but um, I'm realizing that this deep peace mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. that has kind of washed away the fear of lack and the fear of like, I might not be able to reach my dreams, the fear of, what if I miss my moment and mm. I miss my opportunity? Like all of that is like washing away. Yeah. And yeah. it's that like, you know what? I trust God mm -hmm. and I can work really hard in my own strength, but sometimes I can work really hard towards God's initiatives in the wrong time. And I can end up being in the same spot I was. Mm. And so when I was talking to my friend, a few weeks ago, I said, man, if I look back when I was 25, so I, okay, so age and my kids and all that, I actually was <laughs> pregnant whenever I was 18. Uh -huh. And so, and then my first was born whenever I was 19. And I remember this, um, like, yeah, that like rat race of mm. never feeling comfortable in who I was always wondering if I was going to miss my moment. And then that kicked into this. And then you kind of marry, um, church world. So I'm a PK kid. Mm -hmm. So, and I think old school church was very like religious steps, one, two, three. Yeah. Um, and if you don't perform well enough, then you're not good enough. And, mm -hmm. and I see the swing happening where it's, we're leaving that, which is so beautiful, but all of that in me now with like, I have to be who I want to be. And so I started chasing after something and, but it was all really driven out of fear okay. of not mm -hmm. being able to, to get there. What if I've missed my moment? What if I had my kids too early? Like, and I've missed that sweet spot of yeah. learning and growing. I just yeah. graduated high school for crying out loud. You know, mm -hmm. what if I don't ever go to college and, and will that mess it up? And so now it's like, so I began to work really hard to try to achieve the dreams that were on the inside of me. Well, but I, I truly believe I was working at the wrong time. Mm. And so I was telling my friend, I'm like, I look back and honestly, I'm, I'm no further down the road than I was when I was, you know, in my early twenties. Now, have I grown a ton? Sure. Uh -huh. And you know, you get to do a lot of cool things, but as far as like that, what we think in our minds of this magic moment, that's going to happen. It's mm. like, no, I'm yeah. still the same person, you know, Anyway, it's yeah. just interesting. But I think it's a fear that drives us for our minds to wonder. It's so yeah. like fear of finances or fear of missing out or, and it like, we're not present. Yeah. Yeah. I had such an idea in my mind, I think at, at that age group. So like when I was in like, so my college years, uh, like 18 to 22, I, my wife and I, we went to um, a Bible college in New York. And I had such an idea in my mind of like, I got to get out there. I got to start ministry. I got to do this. Like there was like this thing 
in me that was wondering like should i even finish bible school like i just need to hit get out there like start saving people and like start you know whatever i had such an i this idea in my mind of like this pressure Mm -hmm. and it wasn't coming from other people it was like literally self-imposed yep and it was like this thing of like i gotta i gotta get started i gotta get out there i gotta do what i was made for and there's something that's there's a good part of that of like, I want to do what God put me on this earth to do. Yep. But I, I think as you're talking here, I, I see a lot of that kind of like how to season and, and And I don't even know if I don't know, looking back, if I could even say whether or not I was in or out of season sure. or whatever. But I do think that I limited myself from some of the things that maybe I should have been focusing on because yeah. I kind of like, over spiritualize this thing of ministry and like yeah. this is all that matters in life and this is whatever and it was just again i don't know whether or not my path would have changed at all right yeah but i do know that i could have been a lot less stressed out for oh. like a lot of years of my life <laughs> and i probably could have like given myself a break more yes and i probably could have just like enjoyed. enjoyed it yeah. yeah enjoyed yes. stuff yeah i totally agree yeah. i I, th- I agree with you i think my path would not have looked any different of where i am today mm. um but the enjoyment of it would have and mm-hmm. and i look back and i'm like even like i'd said like god has given me such this beautiful moment to be able to have time with my children that i that i didn't feel like i yeah. adequately did yeah and and now they're older, so I'm not making the PB and J's, <laughs> but I'm able to be like on the phone with them when my daughter has an hour commute from school back to mm. her home. And, and I'm able to sit and be present with my son, knowing that, gosh, she's about to be gone and, yeah. and our season changes. And so um, I think God is so good. So, yeah, I think the end game would have looked the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, <laughs> I think sometimes mm-hmm. probably God is like, Oh, you are wearing yourself out, aren't you? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> whew, calm down. <laughs> like, I'm going to get you there. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and just to trust his process, not mine. Mm-hmm. And I Good. think for me, I'm a big goals girl, which I love goals. I think goals are important. I think we need mm-hmm. to have them. I think we need to pursue them. I, I like the idea of having a vision and, you know, scripture is yeah. clear about that. Like have mm-hmm. a vision. People like perish without one. And you, I, I love the idea of that casting off restraint because I mm-hmm. feel like for me in my personal life without vision, I do feel this, like that feeling of what casting off restraint would look like mm-hmm. that. Like, I don't know where I'm going. And so I feel a little bit out of control. And on totally. one hand, it feels great because I'm not bound by anything and I'm living my best life. And, but then on the other hand, I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, it's like a child without discipline. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I feel erratic. Like I want to get my life under control. And so um, I love that, but I think I can get so, I think for me, the being so goal driven, I easily slip into performance, which it's Mm. like I head down the, the, the vision path, like what God has for us. And then I just hang a left. Uh, with the personal <laughs> goal creating, and then I hang right. another left with the like, I'll do it, <laughs> and right. then I just keep going down this road instead of like, let's make goals based on what he's called me to do, and then mm. let's like invite him, That's like good. keep him in the process, and trust that his timing is just perfect. Yeah. And and I think I had to get to this place, and this is like recent for me. I think stepping out of the church world and into, well. I don't, I don't, I still don't know what to call it. Like I would call it ministry world, but I'm like, really, it's just me living life world. Like it's not Mm -hmm. a, I think sometimes we put ministry label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like my assignment. And so I don't know what that is. It's other than my assignment. And so it's a little bit of ministry and it's a little bit of family and it's a little bit of health coaching. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it's in, but at the end, I think the thing that I keep being reminded of in my current season is God just keeps, for me, he keeps saying, Natalie, remember, it's just all about that one person that you're talking to at that Mm. moment. And, um, and whether it's the podcast, whether like, what if you just reach one person right? and that one person changes their life, is that good enough for Mm -hmm. you? And I, and I feel like in this little season that I'm in, that God keeps bringing that back around, like is if it's one person that changes their life, are you okay with you? 
And and I think that pushes yeah. on that performance thing of like, well, I don't know if I am. <laughs> yeah. I want more than just one for me, not for you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, because mm-hmm. it makes me look better. And he's like, yeah, but what if it's the one is fine? Like, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Was that um, was that like a difficult thing for you to get to that place in your mind? Is that is that opposite of kind of what would come naturally to you? Because I know for me, it was a long process of God and not that I'm in any way arrived at the end of that process, Mm -hmm. but but a long process of God, like getting me even to just where I am now, Mm -hmm. where I'm okay with. Even though I don't do it super well, like I'm, I'm okay with the notion mm-hmm. of, all right, I need to rest in the Lord yeah. and trust in His process and yes. His time frame. Yes. Because I would feel very much like if I'm not getting this much done, if mm-hmm. I'm not reaching this many people, if I'm not, you know, whatever yes. you want to put in that sentence, mm-hmm. then I'm being unfruitful i'm being unsuccessful yeah and then the end result of that for me was always carrying the weight of you know depression or carrying the weight yeah. of overload or just mm-hmm. what whatever but it was always something negative yes. <laughs> never something <Yes>. good <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like learning that god is actually pleased with me being on this journey with him mm-hmm. Yes. That makes sense? Oh. So it's not just yes. that he's looking for the results that I'm going to bring. Like he's not just looking for the report card I'm going to bring him to mm-hmm. say, oh, look what I did, God. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like he's yeah. walking, mm-hmm. he's with me. He's walking with yeah. me in the in the daily life stuff. Yeah. And it all it all matters to him. Yes. And that's why I think coming back full circle to like living in the the moment, mm-hmm. recognizing how how important the moment is that we're in because mm-hmm. I like, so again, to just to expand that thought out a little bit further, when I am not focused on the moment because I'm too caught up in whatever is the garbage is that's going on in my brain mm-hmm. that I feel like I need to be focusing on mm-hmm. and it's really not. Mm-hmm. Then I know for me that I miss out on all kinds of opportunities that I could have to you know, meet that person in the coffee shop for that two minutes where I get to speak into somebody's life or yeah. where I I know that the Lord is prompting me to pick up the phone and call my friend yeah. for whatever reason or to call my wife for whatever reason or mm-hmm. and like I can very, very easily miss out on those moments. And it's just that scatterbrain kind of thing of, yes. of being focused on other stuff that, you know, it's learning to live in that just that tandem partnership with the Holy Spirit where it's like, this is where he's leading me in this moment, not just in this season. Both matter, right? Both are very, sure. very important. Like sure. I need to know where he's leading me in this season, yep. but I also need to know that he's walking with me in this moment. Yeah. And if I focus, like I need to focus on the end goal. Mm-hmm. I need to yeah. because it keeps me going yep. today. Yep. But if I focus too much so that I'm, only thinking about the results and it's getting to a point where for me it's unbalanced Mm -hmm. then i'm missing out on the little details that are it's it's kind of like almost counterintuitive i'm missing out on the details that are going to get me there yes like if i focus too much on this i'm not gonna Mm -hmm. do what i need to do today to get there yes if i don't focus on this at all then i'm as you said i'm going to lack vision i'm going to cast off restraint and i'm not going to focus on the things today to get me there either so it's like that (laughs) yes it's an uh, yeah i was thinking when you're talking about the now um the how we say it's the present leading of the holy spirit Mm -hmm. and when we think about like the present leading the today the what he's doing right now in the moment I think it it is really a lot of times it's the opposite of having a scattered mind. Like when you have yeah. a busy scattered yeah. mind to be yeah. able to really dial into the present leading mm-hmm. in the moment to like hear the mm-hmm. call your wife or say hello to this person or reach out the phone, you know, reach out and call someone. Yeah. It's yeah. like that, which, and, and maybe that is some of the, we need to write a book on that. How to have a goal. <laughs> How to be goal driven yet present. Like, yeah, that's good. That's um, good. Recently, I, because it is a journey. And I think the 
the journey, and I'm sure, I don't know, I, I feel like there's, it's two sides. It's one, there's probably a lot of people that are highly driven. Right. Highly gold. I mean, they are going after it. Um, I mean, it's going, it's happening. And then there's the other side of the coin with people that are like, I don't have a goal. I don't have a vision. I don't have a dream. I don't do mm -hmm. anything with my life. I wish that I could do something different, but like very lackadaisical. Mm -hmm. And they take the being peaceful and present in the moment to the opposite end. Right. So it's like there's opposite ends right. of the spectrum. Sure. So recently I was uh, driving to church with my husband and I uh, saw this picture in my mind just clear as day. I'm looking out the window, driving down the road, and I saw this picture of a bicycle. Uh -huh. And um, on the right side, the, they had one um, training wheel on it, the right side of the training wheel. <laughs> and so clearly, I mm -hmm. heard the Holy Spirit, not like audible, but clear as day. Like, you yeah. know that you know that you know. Yeah. The Holy Spirit said, um, we're putting on your left uh, training wheel right now. Hmm. And I was like, okay. And so he began to like speak to me, like fathering me. God was like fathering me in the moment. And he's like, your right training wheel is the driver part of you. It's the goal driven. You're going to mm. like take it and you're going to not let go like a dog with the bone. You're going to be like on top of it, five steps ahead. But the left side, the left training wheel is the peace mm. and it's the calm and it's the, it's okay to be home. You know, yeah, you know yeah, how yeah. even like, so I even had that like restless, like, I don't want to be home. Mm -hmm. I want to have something to do every night of the week, which I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's where I, that is my natural yeah. personality. Like yeah. go, 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 do, do, do. Like my family is like, can you please slow down? I'm like, but I love it. You know, um, but this place that I'm in now is just the complete opposite of my past I would say 25 years of my life. Well, my desires are different. And I've been having this conversation with the Lord, like, what's wrong with me? I'm like, yeah. am I okay? <laughs> like, am I sick? Am I, <laughs> do I, has the virus attacked my brain cells? Like, I don't know what's happening. And, um, and so he brought me so much peace and he's like, you, and so I saw this picture afterwards, you know how, like, if you have only one wheel on, you just go in circles. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I got to get the other training wheel on because you, my friend, are like, like the yep. Tasmanian devil in circles. But I'm going really, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but <laughs> let me show you how far you went. Exactly. Exactly. You just kind of, you just kind of did this That's funny. a lot of times. And picture. so um, when I'm thinking about like go being goal driven and mm -hmm. having like peace and how, how are you like driven yet present in the moment? And I don't know right now. He's putting on my left training wheel. Yeah. I'll let you know yeah. after it gets on. It's just like I saw him like pulling the wheel up, like this is what we're doing. Just be patient. And then at some point, mm -hmm. I'm gonna like let you go. I was telling someone this, and they said, Well, do you think he's gonna take the training wheels off? I was like, I doubt it. Mm. Like, knowing me, he's I probably like, it. I'm just gonna keep them on. When I get to heaven, <laughs> yeah. no more training wheels. He's like, You might be reckless. We're gonna keep them on. <laughs> <laughs> you might just start swerving into oncoming exactly. traffic way too soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's a both. I think it's a balance of both. So I've been thinking about that. And I'm like, I think if someone like, I don't know, I think you could use it as a measuring stick of like, which one am I more predominant in? Mm -hmm. Or am I one without the other? And it really probably is a balance of both. To live, to live a life that's productive, yet so founded in the mm -hmm. peace of God. Yes. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, our world doesn't, isn't conducive for both of those at the same time. It's not, it's not. <laughs> wow. Um, I remember Denise said something probably a couple of years ago, but she said something in a, she was preaching somewhere and she said something that so resonated me um and it was just the, the simplicity of learning to be present in god's presence mm, yeah and it and it really resonated with me because i think that that's uh that's just another area where we can we can neglect just the just that simplicity of our just time with god and 
a relationship with him mm -hmm. and he's somebody who is always present yeah and so we can get i think a little bit over familiar with that mm -hmm. sometimes with that reality yeah that we end up like just you know we whether it whether it translates into well, God will still be there later, so I can mm -hmm. read my Bible. I'll come later. and go. <laughs> God will still be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, uh, but but learning to walk in that, and I think it's the same kind of thing. It's the it's the balance of, yes, God is my closest friend, and He calls me His son, and He's not mm -hmm. angry with me or disappointed in me when I forget to spend time with Him. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't change the dynamic of our relationship of my sonship it doesn't it doesn't change that it i don't i don't become less righteous because mm -hmm. i didn't mm -hmm. whatever at the same time it's maintaining the the freshness of that awe and that wonder of i'm in relationship with the god of the universe like, yeah. i'm in relationship with the god who made all of this who yes. made me mm -hmm. who made me who i am and so it's like the the closeness of of, of intimacy coupled with the awe and wonder and the fear and the reverence of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's just another one of those areas yeah. um, that as you were talking was like connecting with my mind of like how important these just, it is to live in that, in that balance mm -hmm. of like, this is true. Yep. This is also true. And then this is true. <laughs> and then, oh my God, how do I? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I agree. I think we, I don't know, our minds naturally drift to one or the other. And I think too, probably yeah. it, it is how you were raised. It's what you was demonstrated before you. So whether your family taught you what it looks like to live at peace, um, mm. and then you probably connect more apt with the God of peace, mm. <laughs> that attribute of yes. who he is. Um, or if you were in a driver family, like a go-getter and he'll, he'll meet us along the way. Like he's present, but like, mm -hmm. we're going to go after it. Um, I think that sometimes can lend also to that, like kind of falling in a yeah. ditch. You know what I mean? Like we live in ditches instead of on the road, getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's time to get out of the ditch. Yeah, I feel um, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned, and, and this is something we did not talk about, last time and I yep. wanted to to bring it up. So um, you mentioned that you do some coaching, do some health and wellness coaching. Yeah. Um, what is that about? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I think it kind of ties into what we were talking about, about peace and like rhythms. Um, so we are spirit, soul, and body, mm -hmm. right? And I think too many times those that I would say would call ourselves Christians um, from when we were babies and have been mm -hmm. raised in the church, we can hyper, um, like lean into the spiritual health and we can negate everything else. Mm -hmm. And, um, one time years ago, years ago, this is a joke by the way, but I, but this leads into my point. I went to a tent revival. This was, oh, 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, a friend of mine calls me up and she goes, there's a tent revival. You want to come? I'm like, oh, girl, I'm down for a tent revival. Let's go. It was <laughs> yeah. super late at night in a really not great part of town. But by golly, we were going to the nice. tent revival. We saw all kinds of amazing, crazy stuff. Crazy and amazing stuff happened. Yeah. Anyway, tent revival didn't get done until, I don't know, midnight anyway. Well, we're hungry. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to IHOP. And we're sitting there eating pancakes, you know, at midnight. Yeah, I mean, just, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, we'd just been with Jesus. And we are just, <laughs> just feeding our face and we laughed and we were like, oh, this is why we're Christians are fat. Oh my they God. go to revival. Then they go to IHOP afterwards. I'm like, true story. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. I don't think I've ever had like, you know, like a tent revival or like revival meeting yes. or something where I didn't go to a diner afterward, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Yes. And what did you eat? There's, uh, garbage. <laughs> I mean, either, you know, <laughs> pancakes or French toast or like a burger and fries yes. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then we go home and go the to best sleep. Stuff. The best yeah, stuff. Yeah. The is. best stuff. And then we wake up feeling <laughs> miserable the next yeah, day. Yeah. Wondering why. It must have been spent too much time worshiping. I mean, Holy stayed Spirit up too late. Over. It's, it's like, like, no, how about, yeah. <laughs> how about the diner food? Yeah. So I think 
too many times we negate the body part. So That's we good. hyper focus on the spiritual. I, I have seen over the past few years, the swing of really like the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of like getting healthier and our emotions and things like that. And I love that. I really do sense. And I see even on social media, like I think we're now starting to discover, oh, actually our bodies need to come into alignment mm. as well. So mm -hmm. I probably about, I'm going to say three years ago. Um, okay. Well, let me go back a little further. I'll tell you my testimony and it'll bleed into like what I'm doing. Um, Where were you born? Let's, okay. I, let's I, go back. Let's go all the way back. 1980. I just gave you my What age. was the weather like? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I had to have a complete hysterectomy whenever I was 23. So everything. So now the joke is if I got pregnant, it would be like I was Mary all over again. Yeah. If, It'd be that level. Miracle. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm, and I don't want to be. So Jesus. <laughs> I'm not asking for that miracle. Um, so <laughs> please. <laughs> don't fix me. Please don't fix me, Jesus. <laughs> so, um, so I battle with that for 20 something years every year because of it. So it throws you into menopause. It has a lot of wonky mm -hmm. things with your body. Every year I would gain weight and I'm in my like early twenties and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying everything. I'm doing everything, gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight. And as I began to gain weight, I, f I began to hide more. So I think something yeah. that yeah. women, I think, can really identify with, but men too, it's like when you don't feel good in mm -hmm. your body, whether it's two pounds, whether it's, <laughs> I know my, my guys in my house, they're like, they lift weights. And so mm -hmm. if their muscles shrink, they're just like, yeah, devastated. Ugh. I'm like, oh, well, what a problem to have. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I wish I had that problem. Um, but you just don't feel good in your own skin. And it, mm -hmm. so it becomes this slow progression of where you just kind of start caving in. So I was still like serving. I was still on staff at church. I was still doing all these things. I still had dreams. But it was this like wrestle of being stuck in my own body and hiding under my clothes and like taking yeah. 500 hours to pick out an outfit because mm -hmm. I was going to be on stage and I'm like, Oh gosh, I don't feel mm -hmm. good. And, but yet I'm going somewhere. So it wasn't like I hid in my house, but it's an internal battle that sure. happens. So I got introduced to this program that I started coaching and funny story behind this. So my mom, so this mm -hmm. is like, I have been, belly aching about losing weight since I was in my twenties and my mom, God love her, just put up with it over and over again. And so finally she was like, you know what, there's this program you should try. And she would tell me about it. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you should and blah, blah. Moms always know, right? Mm -hmm. Two years go by. I'm like, no, 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 no. So, then, so then on Instagram, mm -hmm. Havila Cunnington posts something. Okay. And sure. I'm like, Oh, my ears are perked. <laughs> Someone that I had never met. I mean, I've met her since then and she's amazing. But at yeah. this point, we were not friends. Mm -hmm. So I ended up saying yes because of Havla and not because of my mom. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go back and say, Mom, I'm really sorry. You, you were, were right. right. <laughs> you, you were, were right. right. Uh, but anyway, so. I do that often with my wife. Yeah. You were right. You're like, you were right. You're right. So anyway, I did this uh, program and then um, I lost 33 pounds. And. I Good went, yeah, the, this is for the girls out there. I went from a size 10 to a size two. That's what will get a girl. They know pant size. Um, it's a big deal. <laughs> girl math, girl math, girl math is pant sizes, okay? Um, but I think the thing that caught my attention, so I did this kind of in secret for a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this isn't going to work anyway. It's going to be embarrassing. And yeah. I'm just going to have to tell people I failed at something else again. But it's, it did work. And about midway through, my best friend came to me one day and she said, um, you look different. And she goes, I know, no, I know, I know, I know you've, you know, you've lost weight. And at this point I was probably 20 pounds in and she's like, I, I know that she's like, but mm -hmm. something is different about you to your core. And she was like, she sat there a minute. And she goes, I know what it is. 
She said, when you walk in a room, you now are confident and demand the room instead of hiding in the background. Wow. That's what's different about you. Wow. And I like set up and I took notice at that point. And I'm like, I felt that way on the inside, but mm -hmm. I, could, I couldn't put words to it. Mm -hmm. So finished the program and I thought, oh, this was amazing. I, I, happier than I'd ever been. I felt good in my skin. Like yeah. I feel yeah. like me. And yeah. I had energy through the roof and, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord was like, you should coach. You should be like a coach. And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think you got the wrong person. <laughs> and, and so, but I'm like, I'll pray about it. You know, yeah. I heard you, I'll but I'll pray about it. About it. <laughs> How backwards is it's that? Like, uh, <laughs> you realize you're going to be praying to me, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're asking you're kinda, the one that told you. You're kind of praying right now. <laughs> when you said that, you realized you were anyway. Yeah. So I prayed about it. I prayed about it. I just waited longer. Is what I did. Yeah. And but the cool thing was, I felt like the Lord told me. He said, "I'm going to teach you something. Hmm. I want you to do this, and I'm going to teach you something." So I've been coaching for mm, two and a half years, and I've probably coached. Oh gosh hundred clients so far. Mm. And I would say, mm -hmm, oh, nine out of 10 are successful wow. too. So it's a high wow. success rate. Um, but what I'm passionate about with the coaching is I want you to feel the way that you're intended to feel in your own skin. And so it, for some people, and I think with that feeling the way you need to feel in your own skin is paired with the discipline of what comes along with your body. And so uh -huh. we are such an undisciplined culture. Yeah. I mean, yeah. with children and with jobs and with habits. And, and I'm, mm -hmm. I would say I'm not like disciplined in every area of my life. Yeah. Um, but I found, and even people have, that have been through program, they will come out saying like, to have discipline mm -hmm. in the way that I eat, but it not be a chore. So it's not a heavy burden, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Even like, think about, I think I just had this thought, like, you know how the words, like the word says, like my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Like mm -hmm. it's, you're still carrying a yoke, but it's easy right. and it's light right. and it's there and it's present. And it's like, oh, you can actually have discipline in mm -hmm. your life and it mm -hmm. not be hard. And, but I think for me, I had to see the fruit of discipline before I could jump on board with saying discipline was good. Um, so now I see the fruit of it and I'm like, oh, this is actually beneficial in my life. So, um, yeah, so I coach a program. I'm like an independent coach within the program okay. that coaches a lot of different programs from diabetics to teenagers to adults and elderly and fitness gurus and mm -hmm. people that need to lose 150 pounds or 300 pounds. And so it's a yeah. wide range. And yeah. like Donald Trump said, yeah, you're the best in the biz. I <laughs> um, But we really do like we hone in on the blood sugar and getting that in line. And a lot of people will come to us that are pre-diabetic or mm -hmm. insulin resistant. And really it's our diet. It's the going back to the joke. That's not a joke. It's the diners and it's the IHOPs mm -hmm. and all those things. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a good slice of pizza and, or a whole pizza for that matter. Yeah. And I, I love a pancake. Um, but a steady diet of it isn't good for me. So it's right. moderation then. So it's like getting the weight off and getting your body in alignment. And then you, what I like to say, you level yeah. up from there. Yeah. Um, and I think the mis, um, misconception with weight loss is that it's, uh, you cross the finish line and you're done. Mm. And that's not true. Yeah. Um, we, it's a contending. Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. And, and I think that's where people, I think where things get labeled fad diet mm -hmm. when maybe it's like an unfair label because people have this thought of like, well, when I reach this, then I'll be done. Right. So what I found is I can cross the finish line and be done and stay still. Mm -hmm. And if I do, then I will go backwards. Right. Staying still isn't an right. option. So you either move forward into a different goal um, or you go backwards. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it's 
And even that word contending, I think people probably would ruffle people's feathers. Like, well, that doesn't sound fun, but it is. <laughs> doesn't sound fun. Well, <laughs> discipline is not yeah, that fun. Yeah, it's but... not always fun, but it really does get you down the road to where you need to go. And so, um, yeah. So the, the health coaching stuff is not on my website. I'm going to get it on my website. I just mm-hmm. need to like, okay. I'm in my mind. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you can still email me through my website yeah. or I did memorize this one. You can email me at yeah. <laughs> Natalie coaching for life at gmail.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but Natalie yeah. coaching for life. life yeah. Is that a number four it's, or spelled out? No, four? it's a spelled out for. Yeah. Yeah. But it really is. It's just a whole comprehensive thing. Mm-hmm. And so, but I think it like all bleeds into everything that we're talking about. And so I'm like, Absolutely. if you, even going back to the discipline of our mind, because mm-hmm. um, I've seen people that have lost weight, but they gain it right back, but they, yeah. but they chose to do the weight loss portion, but not the, the heart work and mm-hmm. not the, the, some people turn to food for comfort. And yeah, so if you don't the address the comfort, and, uh, then yeah, stress is going to happen. Uh, and so what are you going to do when stress happens? And so it does all go back to yeah. that mind being full, cluttered mind, you know, like, mm-hmm. and the Bible's clear about that too. So I, I gained a whole bunch of weight years ago when I, I went through a season of um, just depression. Mm-hmm. Like I went through a season where yeah. uh, it was a very difficult financial season. Mm-hmm. And it just made me really depressed. At the time, if you asked me, I would yeah. not have any idea that I was depressed. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was waking up terrified every morning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was just like, just a bad season. And yeah. I would find, I would look for any way comfort mm-hmm. in food. Mm-hmm. I gained a whole bunch of weight. Yep. Um, the past six months, about since July, um, I've been uh, on a journey. Mm-hmm. I love and that. And yep. I've lost about 30 pounds. Oh, congratulations. Since July. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. Way to go. And the thing that I was terrified of, uh-huh. okay, <laughs> is like when I started to see the well, two things, but okay. when I started to see weight coming down, especially when I first got under like 200 because mm-hmm. I was at like I was like 212 okay. or more. That's what I I know for sure that <laughs> I was 212. I might have been 215 at like bef- yeah. like at, we don't before it, it got to the end. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I when, when, especially like when I started getting somewhere where I was like hitting benchmarks, mm-hmm. I was like, I was so terrified of regressing. I was so yeah. terrified of like, absolutely like, and, and so I think I was, I probably got a little unbalanced mm-hmm. <laughs> to go back to our theme here, <laughs> a little yeah. unbalanced in my approach. And even to where mm-hmm. I, I, at, at one point I, I really felt like the Holy Spirit was like, was like, Hey, give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, uh, I mean, at at first Mm -hmm. I did not want to miss a day of working out. So I'd work out seven days a week. Yep. And I did that for a little while and, uh, (laughs) I started getting injuries (laughs) and I'm not sure if that's why or not, but I had a couple of injuries happen Uh where I was like, I had to, I didn't stop working out completely, but I had to tweak. Yeah. The way that I was working out because I just kept hurting myself. Yeah. And so, but I was like, like seven days a week, no rest. And then I was like, because I was afraid to miss a day mm-hmm. because I didn't want to break the routine because I didn't mm-hmm. trust myself yeah. with the, to be disciplined enough to come back yeah. the next day. Cause I've yeah. been through that so many times yep. where like, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm two, two weeks, three weeks, you know, going to the gym, you know, yeah. whatever I'm doing. Yeah. And then you know, something will happen and I'll get sick or we'll go out of town or there's a vacation or yes. there's a whatever, there's a stressful work week. And then it's, I miss two days, three days, four days. Yeah. And then before you know it, it's like, I haven't been to the gym in a month. <laughs> yes. Yes. I understand that. The best thing for me that I ever did was I stopped going to the gym uh-huh. and just started doing very simple okay. body weight workouts uh-huh. at home. Mm-hmm. That was yep. really helpful for me because yep. I didn't have, it, it took away my excuses of like, mm. oh, I don't have you know, it's like the drive to the gym yes. and then I can't go if like I'm watching the kids and then it's like, yep. it's like, nope, Sophia, you and me, we're working out together, yeah. <laughs> you know, she's two, almost two, <laughs> she's almost two, insert cute Sophia. <laughs> yeah. So like I'm doing pushups in her bedroom and she's climbing on my back and yeah. you know, I'm trying not to kick her while I'm doing crunches and <laughs> yes. that sort of thing. But, yeah. but 
for me, that mm -hmm. was like something that was sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just think that that's mm -hmm. like important, yeah. right? Is like the finding, finding what, what works for you and something Absolutely. that you can sustain. Maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the whole like mindset and even like identity stuff comes into play there oh, yeah. because you don't want to do something that you're like afraid of, yeah. you know, you don't want to do something. I mean, I, I'm not talking about the initial steps, yeah, yeah. stages sometimes of fear. Sometimes you got to start it scared. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to start that way. Uh -huh. But I mean, like you don't want to, um, like for, for me, I, I was like just getting unbalanced in my, yes. in, in my yeah. approach. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was also like the, I think for me, the scariest thing was like, I've been overweight for years at this point mm -hmm. and I like, I love to eat. Mm -hmm. I love to yeah. eat late at night. Yeah. 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 I like love I, food. You know, I can <laughs> do all that. Cool. Yeah. I could get into like, I would, I, for a while I did this thing where I think I was deceiving myself because mm -hmm. I was intermittent fasting. <laughs> you were just giving yourself room to eat as much as you exactly. want, which I've never intermittent exactly. fasted, so I can't speak to that. But uh... like, I don't even eat before 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and then from Watch 4 me. to like midnight. <laughs> it's like a post tent it's revival. Just, <laughs> it's just freedom, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think that goes back to what we were talking about before, even with the like not being at peace in our current mm -hmm. circumstance of yeah. the so it's that bringing it all in line together so if it's only on me like if god has no desire for me to remain healthy like we pull that out and we put it all on our shoulders like mm. i gotta make this thing happen yeah but yet in the spirit realm we partner with god and in the soulish realm with emotions we're begging god you know wow. please but in our body we're like <laughs> I I'm got gonna, this. I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week. I got this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's like, what does it look like for it to all come into alignment where he is the author mm -hmm. and the finisher, the perfecter of everything that we do? And so I love that. What does mm -hmm. it look like? And, and I think that even goes back to the two training wheels. Sometimes some people aren't willing to get off the sidelines to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to remain in an unhealthy place. And and maybe um, some people will call it like skinny fat. That's like a legitimate term where people yeah. are very thin, but they're very unhealthy mm. because of what they're putting in their mouth. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes we don't want to get off the sidelines. And then sometimes we are like what you're saying. And, and I've been there too, not with going to the gym some this week. Um, I had to recently hire a coach to hold me accountable to go to the gym three days a week. I'm like, oh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> It's, I enjoy it when I'm there, but oh, getting there. Getting there is like, tough. Yeah. It's horrible. I had, to, I had to stop going. You had to do it I'm at your house. still paying for the membership for some reason. <laughs> you should stop that too. <sighs> I should um, stop that but too. it's like, so then we become too much of a driver where we put it all on our shoulders mm -hmm. that if I do one mess up. So it's like, what does it look like to come to the middle of it? So to put in the work to make healthy habits mm -hmm. and to become disciplined and to get the weight off, to live really optimally for where you are and your age, mm -hmm. your season of life, who God's made you to be, your bone structure, all the things. So to be healthy and then continue to contend and have a rhythm of maintaining your health. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, I think it's something, a small percentage of our population is really mastered and understood. And so I think it's having peace in your current place and finding a rhythm that works. So um, I had a, and everybody's different. So it's like, for you, you found the rhythm of working out at home. Mm -hmm. um, I had a gym once at the house and meh. I was like, open the door. Meh. <laughs> I have to like get in my car Yeah. and then I'll do it. Cause I'm in, it's just yeah. in getting to the car. But anyway, so, but yeah. finding your rhythm and then also like finding your eating pattern rhythms. Mm -hmm. And that's that like taking it to the next yeah. level. And don't stop at just the weight loss, but then it just becomes modifying and monitoring. But I do think it goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning about this, like, I have to be and I have to do, you know, 
get off the sidelines and get into yeah. a healthy place, but yeah. then find peace in it yeah. and use it to enjoy your life mm -hmm. to further peace and joy and God's call in your life and not let it totally wrap you up. Yeah. Yeah. It really 100%. does. All, yeah. It all does go together. The I really comfort, think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. So like I had to, I didn't, I didn't think I could do it. Like, mm -hmm. Like when I was first yeah. starting, I definitely, there was a lot of just like fear that I was like, I don't even know if I can do it. So mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what the initial goal was, but I remember I was like, okay, because sometimes for me, I need to do things a little bit extreme mm -hmm. just to get myself like interested enough yeah. to do it. Uh -huh. So I was like, all right, I'm going straight carnivore <laughs> diet. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think my goal was to do it for, I forget what the initial goal was, but I did like maybe two weeks mm -hmm. of just like nothing that did not come from an animal. Mm -hmm. um, so my stomach hurts. Just so the thing about, about so the thing about that is, and I'm not, and by the way, I don't know what I'm talking about. So don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying I did it. Okay. Okay. I'm not did saying it work? anyone else should do it. Did it work? It, it worked. So I okay. went from, um, I mean, I, you know, in that, I, I think in the first 10 days I lost mm -hmm. like five pounds or seven okay. pounds or something yeah, yeah. like that. So, but it's, you know, you get rid of the water weight sure. and, and you get Always. rid of, yeah. but like, if you think about it, it's, I don't think it's so much the fact that I'm eating lots of meat. I think it's the fact that, well, I'm not eating sugar. Yeah. I'm not eating carbs, stuff. I'm not eating all mm -hmm. the empty, you know, stuff. So I'm yeah. eating something that's got pro it's a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. Um, it's nutrient dense, yep. that sort of thing. Yep. And so it's kind of like just cutting out the garbage mm -hmm. and that, you know, coupled with working out and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, of course it doesn't feel good at the beginning. No. Of course there's like cravings. Of course, like Absolutely. I'm sitting there like, what do I eat? Because it's like, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of snacks. I mean, I can only right? eat so much bacon Oof. in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really like to eat a ton of uh -huh. bacon anyway. So it's like, <laughs> so it's, it's like I'm doing beef this thing. Jerky. And so I'm just like trying to figure out like what to, yeah, yeah. some like beef, but most of the beef jerky you can't eat. Oh, because okay. I mean, the thing about being on a, I mean, you can eat beef jerky uh -huh. if you make it yourself. I didn't know um, this. The, okay. the, and there's kinds, there's some that you could eat, but okay. if you want to be like a, like, I mean, I'm True. saying if you're on the strict carnivore diet, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not eating anything that's processed. Uh -huh. You're not eating it. Right. So you're literally like mm -hmm. just eating like food. Yeah. There's nothing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. got nitrates in it, if it's got anything, oh, like you're yeah. not supposed to do that on the carnivore diet. So even... I was like, oh, cool. So, like, I can eat like cold cuts. Yeah, no. And it's like, nope, That's you can't processed. have that. I was yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> that was a problem because because that was like something I, was like, I could yeah. snack on some slices of turkey or something like that. It's like, nope, mm. you can't. You're not supposed to have that either. So, anyway, I mean, I'll I'll allow myself to do that now when I'm yeah. doing that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it's like at, for for that season, mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of like jumpstart sure. the the process. Yeah. And I started doing that, and then from there, I kind of like slacked up a little bit and just mm -hmm. kind of. I started having some fruit every once in a while and some different things. And then I've tweaked things here and there, but mm -hmm. for the, for the most part and from like Christmas time until now, I've been uh -huh. pretty, yeah. pretty off. <laughs> oh, I thought <laughs> pretty, you were going to say like, I'm back. Pretty off kilter. Off. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, the, it's hard to get, listen, when eating, you go, yeah, when been... you, like when you start eating sugars, yeah. It's all science. Like people think I'll just have the willpower to stop eating sugar. Mm -hmm. And then when they choose to stop, they beat themselves up because they still have the cravings. Well, <laughs> sugar is like cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's literally you have to, it, it is a withdrawal that you have to come off of. And so I think where people get it twisted is they, they beat themselves up because they have mm -hmm. the cravings. So they think it's not working. Yeah. So then they cave back in and it's like, no, 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 stick to the process. Yeah. You're detoxing from the sugar, yeah. all the things that are happening inside your gut. Like, yeah. 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 So, and a lot of people coming off of Christmas, it does because you get back into the bad habits. Mm -hmm. It's like, why? I'm going to ask God this question when we get to heaven. <laughs> why mm -hmm. are bad habits so easy, mm -hmm. but good ones can be challenging? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, why is mm -hmm. it that way? But it just is. Yeah. It is. It's so much easier to eat a pancake. <laughs> it's so much easier to eat a pancake. <laughs> 
so much better. I had pan didn't I? Have, I had pancakes. <laughs> we eat a salad. With pancakes on Sunday. <laughs> I had some pancakes on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were delicious. Wow, I, they they are. And once you get the weight off, you can have it in moderation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All things are permissible. Like, well, okay, can't say all things. <laughs> Most things. They used to give cocaine to babies. Did they? Yeah, that's not good. No, you shouldn't that do is that. not permissible. In, not even we in moderation. Not do that. Shouldn't do that. Period. In this. No, yeah. No. Yeah, like early 1900s, they used what? to. You can actually go back and you could Google this later. You can find there's like ads, like you find old like ads from like the 1920s and stuff. Why would they do Of like this? they were like giving babe kids. No, they were parents were giving <laughs> cocaine to their babies for like their teething, for like the pain. It was like a pain thing. I'm no. sure it wasn't as potent like as it is today. Like lethal. Like it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. It was a thing. Yeah. Oh, they interesting. Do that. Yeah. Don't try that. So not even in moderation, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't any do that, it. But, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. No. But I think it is. But a important. lot of things. Most things, you know, in life are. Yeah. Yeah. If, and 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 that's the thing. I, I think with anything, it's just it's getting out of, yeah, that, that the discipline of yeah. of of being able to, yeah. Some, sometimes just maintaining that discipline is. Mm -hmm is tough, but that's, yeah, we've got to do it. I, I find, I find for me that the, the, you said spirit, soul, body, mm -hmm. I, I find for me that the body part of it, mm -hmm. um, helps me with the other two parts. Yes. Because, well, for, I think for a lot of reasons, I think there's mm -hmm. probably some very physiological reasons mm -hmm. why that mm -hmm. happens, but even just from a practical standpoint, it's like, I'm already doing like the hardest thing in my life yeah. by like not eating this brownie <laughs> yeah. right now. Yes. Yeah. Or choosing not to like uh -huh. buy this ice cream and yeah. have it in my house. Like yeah. I'm 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 choosing to do something that's difficult. Like mm -hmm. I'm choosing to um, you know, take a cold plunge mm. oh, in I the did. morning. <gasps> like I'm choosing one. there's <laughs> I started <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do cold cold uh cold shower every day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's just like for so literally for like three minutes. Yes. And it's just like the I think the idea of mm -hmm. I'm doing I'm I'm intentionally like exposing myself to something that's that's difficult that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And I just think the the mindset of it, yeah. whether it's that or something else, right. you know, it doesn't have to be that, but mm -hmm. it's just like the mindset of something. And so for me, that's a lot of the piece of like the working out and the, you know, trying to eat good. I I think I eat, I'd say I eat mostly good, but yeah. I don't eat good yeah. all the time. 80 20 rule. But it's 80 20 rule. Yeah. 70 30. <laughs> Can we negotiate on this? No. <laughs> um, Let's stick with 80 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 80 20 is good. But yeah. So it's, but it's that, it's when I, it's an, it's an area for me that allows me, I think, mm -hmm. to, to focus more in the, in the other areas of my yes, life. You know I, I mean? agree. So, I heard someone say once this, this stat rocked me to my core. They said that the, I don't know what the, the right word is of it. All, everyone out there that's much smarter than I am, they're going to know immediately. But there's a lining in your stomach that is the same lining that is in your brain. And so this is called your second brain. Okay. So <clears throat> you have more memories held in your stomach than you do up here in your brain. And so when you think about what we put in our bodies and how we treat our bodies, okay. uh -huh. this really does affect the way we think and the way that we feel in every other area of our wow. life. And so wow. when um, I was also listening to a podcast recently by a doctor, it was a random topic, but she was talking about in obesity, the inflammation that's actually in your brain in obesity and how the inflammation in your brain affects depression and wow. all kinds of stuff. And wow. so it's that, I think we've somehow severed this idea uh -huh. that, well, my body is my body yeah. with it. And I'll just take medication to treat or put a bandaid on something that could wow. actually be solved. And so it really, so when you say, when you find that you're, if you have your body in line, everything else works, it is kind of true. Yeah. It's a big deal. That's crazy. I know. Second brain. That's crazy. Yeah. And I was in um, a conference once with um, Bob Hamp, and he he will always say, like, put, put your hand on your head where you hear the voice of God. And hmm. 
Um, it's funny because most of the people in the crowd will do like this or they'll put their hand on their spouse, which is hysterical. That's funny. Like <laughs> my spouse <laughs> tells me everything I need to know. Um, you're kind of deep in my <laughs> chest. And, and so, and he was like, and anyway, he kind of walks you through a series of just like, be still for a minute. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel a few things. And by the end of it, everyone puts their hand right here. Mm. And if you think about the way that God has created us mm -hmm. to think and feel and hold memories here, of course he speaks to us. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't know. I think when I think of it that way, so we have a thing in when I coach people and it's your why you've got to have a big enough why, because motivation is not going to get you out of bed every morning. It's just not your mm. motivation will wane. It will. Yes. Because the first week you might be gung ho, but week two, it's boring. Mm -hmm. You're done. You're it's tired. Boring. It's hard. I'm not it's, seeing results quick enough. Yeah, yeah I'm like, over what's it. What's the point of this? Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to do this. So your motivation will go away. Mm -hmm. Period in the story. Um, but a, your why oftentimes can be the thing that pulls you when the motivation mm -hmm. doesn't push you, and so mm -hmm. why the why is so important. So like, why do I want to be healthy? For me, my why is I want to fulfill everything that God has planned for me, has for me, every hope yeah. and dream that I have inside of me. And I want to be able to travel. I want to travel the world. And I can't do that if I am wrestling with obesity Mm. or heart disease or things like that. Like I, yeah. I need to be able to be healthy to do all the things. And so for some people, I've coached some people and their why, which I love this, is they want to be able to play with their grandkids. So they're wrestling yeah. with obesity, but they can't get down in the floor and live life with their family. Yeah. And so I think it's that, and, the, and our why ultimately will go back in line with spirit, soul, body. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it just, it paints a bigger picture and so, yeah, your why is really important. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And it can change. So in the beginning, my why was not some big, beautiful why. It was really birthed out of misery, okay. like in tears. And like, I just want to feel good in my own skin one more time. Mm -hmm. But then as I began to lose weight and then I lost the weight, then in me keeping the weight off, my why changed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a friend that says... Um, uh, when you know better, you do better. Mm. And I think too many times we don't know what it feels like to feel good. Yes. Yeah. We get so comfortable with the way that we feel. Mm -hmm. um, the actor, Chris Pratt, I heard mm -hmm. him say something recently where, I mean, he went through a massive transformation from like, he was very, you know, he was a big guy when he was on Parks and Recreation. And then when he started doing like action movies, like now he's like jacked and, and mm -hmm. thin and everything. But he goes, um, uh, when I was overweight, he's like, my meals were amazing. They were so, mm -hmm. it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the rest of my life was was miserable. It was like, yeah. it, and, and he's like, now my meals are boring. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like very boring, just yes. very, you know, basic. Yeah. But he's like, but the rest of my life, everything in between the meals is awesome. It's well said. Yeah, it was really, it was really like just well said. He's got a good way to, yeah. practical way of, of saying things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you just fuel your body. You fuel it to what it needs to operate <laughs> optimally. Yeah. It's like we, it's, it's our job to steward our bodies. That's mm -hmm. what we do. And so we eat to do that. Yeah. And sometimes it's <laughs> yeah. boring, but the payoff is big time. Mm -hmm. Big time. And that's the crazy thing is that like we, we need the we need to eat mm -hmm. like we need it to fuel ourselves to be productive to be healthy all of that but it's like there's so many like ways to do it yep and there's some that are really good and there's some that are like bad and there's some that are really bad mm -hmm. there's all these different ways to do it but like we have to do it it's like mm -hmm. this thing that so many people struggle with um that like obviously we both struggled with it mm -hmm. in the past Absolutely. and like there's i mean i think like 40 percent or something oh like that of our country is is obese it's like very high I have numbers a picture on my phone it's it's incredible yeah, yeah i have like a, a diagram of the united states and it is almost all red there are very few states that's not predominant obesity and houston is one of the largest oh yeah cities yeah it's one of the highest populations wow. of condensed obesity in the united states Everything's, Everything's big in Texas. Texas. 
Houston and San Antonio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm doing, I'm, I, I hope I'm doing my part to, uh, to turn that. <laughs> That's right. To turn that scale One's the down. other direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. One down. <laughs> you can count me because when I showed up last year, I was, I was at my peak, peak weight. So, yeah. Um, well, very, very cool, Natalie. Thank, Thank you so much for, for, so for your time and for joining me. Uh, it's just been awesome. I love the face to face. Yeah. It's oh, very, very cool. This is so fun. Thank you. Oh, hey, one more thing. Um, I, recently I heard, I, I listened to, um, one of your recent podcast episodes, because mm-hmm. I know it was recent because it was based on the year, like the new yes, year. So the uh, New Year's resolutions as opposed to, excuse me, th- um, setting themes mm-hmm. as opposed to resolutions. And you yeah. mentioned earlier in our conversation how you love to set goals and that sort yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that that was really, really helpful the way that you uh, described uh, theme setting as opposed to just like doing the New Year's re- resolution thing resonated with me because that's something that we've been saying for for years. Cool. We actually, one of our pastors years ago, uh, he had a he he said uh, I have a word from the Lord and and he said uh, the Lord says stop making resolutions. <laughs> And the whole congregation and, was like, what? And I never said, and he wasn't saying that, that that's for everybody. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not for everybody. Sure, if sure. resolutions work for you, you should keep doing yeah. it. Uh, but it was like for us in that season. But it's mm-hmm. something that like uh, since then I was like, yeah, um, I don't really do resolutions anymore. Mm-hmm. I love setting goals. Yeah. You know, I think it's important so, to set goals. I think it's important to, uh, w- you know, we're very intentional every year about hearing God mm-hmm. for the year. Yep. What are you saying? Yep. So we hear him like in a very spiritual sense in terms of, um, you know, we'll, we'll get a like actual like word of the Lord for, for the year. Um, but then it's also, okay, within the framework of what you're saying, mm-hmm. what are some of the practical things that like you're doing mm-hmm. that, you know, like in our partnership that I can accomplish Absolutely. throughout the course of this year? Uh, so it resonated very much with uh, what you were describing there. So um, would you just give like a kind yeah. of a s- snapshot of of what yeah. you mean by, um, you know, setting themes, themes or operating according to themes? Yeah. So resolutions are often hard, concrete um, goals that we set mm-hmm. for ourselves. I'm going to be in the gym seven times. You know, I'm going to go seven days a week or I'm going to go five days a week or and it's always, uh, resolutions oftentimes are always made towards bettering ourselves. So we have this like thing on the inside of us that we want to be better, do better, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but re- so resolutions are hard and they have uh, check marks that go along with them. Like, did okay. you accomplish it? Yes or no. Mm-hmm. Did you go all of 2024 and do this one thing? Yes or no. Um, stat says the second Friday of every January is National Quitters Day. It's <laughs> like, Friday. yeah, it's because by that point, everyone has dropped their resolutions. It's over. Like, because it goes back it's to great. like being in the gym or being, you know, on an eating program. You're like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Did so, you quit? So, some years so, that could be as early. That could be the eighth. That could be January. That could, that could be January 8th, right? Like if the first day of the year is a Friday. That's true. Like that could be, that's not a lot of days. I'm not even, I'm like a weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they quit. Um, so themes are something <laughs> that you can kind of blanket your year with that you can fit in your current season and circumstances based on the theme. So mm-hmm. what that might look like, um, instead of I'm going to read 10 books by the end of 2024, mm-hmm. the theme says I'm going to be a reader this year. Mm-hmm. So, um, for me, my, my theme is peaceful pace um, so that whatever I do, I can have a peaceful pace, whether it is fast or whether it's slow. Okay. Um, so instead of saying this year, I'm going to use my calendar and I'm going to block off a self-care day once a week, like that's a resolution, like mm-hmm. hard, these hard lines. Well, you don't know what your life is going to look like in seven months. Right. You don't know. Are you going to have more babies? I don't. <laughs> that was not an announcement. Nope. He says no. Um, like you, you don't know. I mean, <laughs> look, you're not having any more look, babies. Yeah. <laughs> As much as depends on me. No. Wait, hang on. Wait. Not... Yes and no. Just stop it there. <laughs> Forget I said anything. Yeah. Yeah. More babies. More babies. <laughs> but not more babies. Uh, 
but a peaceful pace looks like whether I am traveling with my husband, mm -hmm. that it there is a steady amount of peace. So instead of me traveling with him, so I came down to Houston with him on a work trip, um, mm -hmm. I could have scheduled pre-scheduled and made a resolution that, you know, by golly, I'm going to do X amount each day, mm -hmm. or I can know that I'm coming to Houston and make sure I have not overtaxed myself and tasked myself with things to do mm -hmm. that I'm covered up, that I can't have a peaceful pace. And I think it's also, I can um, say, good job, Natalie, right in crazy seasons. So um, that would look like, I'm trying to think, this just happened in my life. I was like, you did a good job. Um, what was it? Hmm. Uh, oh, I I was sick. So I, at the beginning of the year, I got sick. And in the middle of being sick, my, no, I just gotten done. Okay, scratch that. This is the story. <laughs> I really was sick for like 25 days. MeetNatalieTaylor.com. Um, <laughs> Where www. She the... might not always remember, <laughs> but occasionally there's good content. <laughs> this is when you know that it's God, when you don't have to depend on yourself. Yeah. Um, so my um, my son was we were having his graduation party at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. and um, my in laws were in town. My son got sick with the flu. My father in law was in town. He got sick. I had just gotten off the hills of being sick for. 25 days so like i might i'm just back up on my feet days. 25 days that's a whole nother podcast it's like three fridays <laughs> four i sh i really would have quit by fridays. then i would have quit <laughs> if it was a resolution yeah uh, but because it wasn't a resolution i looked back on that stint when everyone was sick i'm hosting a graduation party life is chaos mm. so in the natural it was far from peaceful yeah but I was able to turn around and look back and go, you know what? There was this underlying peaceful pace. Like I just made sure in that chaos that I did not allow it to ruffle my feathers. I'm like, mm -hmm. we're going to roll with the punches here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. We're going to figure this out at night. I prayed a lot. I'm like, Cheers. Um, nice. but I was able to go back and celebrate a peaceful pace in the middle of chaos versus mm -hmm. I had on my calendar that I was going to have a self care day on Friday and my son is sick with the flu. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to negate my son to hold my commitment because it's a resolution Yeah. instead of just having a peaceful pace. Yeah. So it's just, you're able to flow with it. And I think it goes back to asking God, like, what does my year look like? Yes. Like what does, what does this season for me look like? And mm -hmm. what's the theme of my life yeah. for this season? It's good. Yeah. That's good. It's been a really big thing for me lately. Just that I something I feel like the Lord is speaking to me about is like continuing to like dream with God, mm -hmm. continuing to like because He'll give us information, He'll give us direction, He'll give us revelation. And that's not an invitation to like close the door and move on because we got the revelation. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Invitation to engage with him more. Yeah. yeah. On even on on that. Not that we're gonna stay there forever, mm -hmm. but like, all right, is there more to this? Is there more that I'm not understanding? Is there more that you want to make clear to me? Is there more wisdom that you want to give me on this? Is there and and it's kind of like, you know, I, I look at when when God speaks to me, his word is living and powerful. And my role with that is to like like incubate his mm, his yes. his word as as a yeah. as a promise yeah. to keep it alive mm -hmm. and sometimes that's like Hebrews 10:13 holding fast the confession of my faith without wavering cuz he who promised is faithful so sometimes it's like i, I got to i got to speak on this i have to remind myself i have to think about this i've got to keep this word i've got to keep this part of the vision in front of me so that i know what i'm hitting at so that i i don't get discouraged or when i get discouraged then i bring this up you know yeah. when i'm discouraged i can do the the psalm 103 thing like david and hey soul mm -hmm. like why are you downcast within me yeah. or uh you know whatever and and i can i can do that i can bring up the the word because it's it's alive mm -hmm. but i think sometimes 
we may have the tendency to like hear from God and then we get excited about it for a little while and we start going. And if we don't see results happen right away, we can forget about it just like we would do with a resolution, just like we would do with anything else. Yes. And so I just, I think living in it, but also recognizing this is just something that's been big for me lately is just yeah. recognizing, um, well, God, do, are, are you, do you still want to talk about that? Like, do you still want to <laughs> yes. spend more time on, yeah, yeah. on that? Yes. So it becomes increasingly clear. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's kind of been a part of the, the strategy mm -hmm. for me lately with yeah. the, the different things that I know God is leading me and leading us to accomplish in this year is like incre increased clarity. Yeah. Which um, requires yeah. you to sit a little longer. Mm -hmm. And it does. which, yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And we Which just doesn't wanna, always come naturally. We just want to go fast. Yeah. Yeah. But just sit a little longer. Yeah. You'll create so much like fruit and discipline mm. from just being present. Yeah. Yeah. And not Full feeling... circle. Good job. Being present. <laughs> <laughs> she might not know her website, but she can come around full circle. <laughs> Is that, that I can do. That's your new slogan. <laughs> Natalie Taylor. <laughs> I might not know the basics <laughs> of uh <laughs> of how to get a hold of me. <laughs> but I promise you won't want to. But, <laughs> but if, we talk, if we talk long enough, I will make that conversation make so much sense. It's it will really my gift. Blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's sometimes the basics. <laughs> well, that's why, I mean, you, you, you hire other people when I, you, you know, to help with the, the, base, the basics, like the basics. Of, I should probably memorize my website. I mean, it's good to be it helpful. Couldn't hurt. Next time I'm here, ask <laughs> you'll me. know it. <laughs> I'm going to know it. I'm going to know yeah. all of the ways that you can get a hold all of, of me. All of the ways to get a hold of me. I love it. <laughs> Oh, this was great. This was wonderful. I enjoyed a it a lot. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys for watching or listening. And uh, don't forget to check out meetnatalietaylor.com. Don't go to natalietaylor.com <laughs> unless you want to hear some Christian music. You may, I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe that'd be a... This could be a twofer. I should reach this out could to her. Be. Yeah. If you um, promote me, I promote you. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'm all about it. Uh, but thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, share a comment or leave a review or something of that nature. Always very, very helpful. So appreciate you guys so much. And uh, Natalie, thanks again for making the trip over. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. See you again. All right. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.